Hello and welcome to part two of the Apple Scripting Number Series. If you haven't watched part one, I highly suggest that you go back and watch that, uh, as this video will make a lot more sense with that first video under your belt. So in this video, we're going to finish our fictional project where we Apple Script numbers and take file information and fill out a numbers sheet. So with that said, let's just hop right back into it. All right, so now we'll create a repeat loop and I'll say repeat with I from one to the count of the file list. So the number of files that the user had selected from the folder. And we're gonna start gathering some information from this file that we'll be putting into our numbers sheet. So we're gonna say set file path to item I of file list. So that's gonna give us the first file of this list. And then I'm gonna say set HFS path to convert path to our handle that we made earlier, file path, and we want the HFS version. Then I'm gonna say set file info to info for HFS path as alias. So this is going to give us a whole host of information about the file. So we're gonna say set file name to name of file info, because that's a property of the file info. Then I'll say set file extension to name extension of file info. Then I'll say set base name to my replace substring. We'll create a new handler there. And then we will get the file name. We'll send in an argument of the file name and we'll send in uh, what the extension is that we got from the previous statement. And so let's go ahead and focus on writing that handler now. So we'll go ahead and say on replace substring. And then we'll have the input string and then we will search for and replace something. So we're gonna search for something and replace it with something else. And we'll do obviously our end replace substring. And next we'll do a try block, just like in our previous handlers, we'll do our try on error and we'll capture the error with the E variable. And we know we're gonna be changing the Apple scripts text item delimiters in this one. So as a default, I always want to return those back to their, whatever they were previously before I did anything. And then we're going to do our normal display error and we'll put in our handler name, replace substring with the error message. And again, we'll do a return. In this case, I'll do an empty list. And we'll do our end try. Okay, so now for the handler itself, I'm going to say set TID, short for text item delimiters, to Apple Scripts text item delimiters. That's gonna get the current text item delimiters and, and capture them. Then I'll set the Apple script text item delimiters to, and in this case, we're gonna say whatever the search criteria was. So I'm gonna, whatever we're trying to search for. Then I'll set the temp info to text items of the input string as string. And then we will set Apple Scripts text item delimiters back to, or excuse me, to the replacement string. And then we will set the result string to the text items of our temp info. That's gonna actually do the replace for us and we'll set that as a string. And then we will set Apple Script, Apple Scripts text item delimiters to TID. So we're going to reset them back to their original state and then we will return the result string that we uh, created during this process. So after we've done the find and replace. All right back on the on run we'll do a set file kind to kind of file info. So the information that we gathered from the file and we'll set modified date to modification date of file info. And just for some fun, we'll play with dates a little bit and we'll say set modified month to month of modified date as string. And then we'll say set modified year to year of modified date as string. So we can play a little bit with some of the other information that we have available to us and some of the other things we've learned previously. Okay, so now we want to create another handler uh, where we can put some data into our numbers sheet. So. We'll create a new handler called set value of range and we're going to tell it what table we want to put it in and then what the range that we want the values to go in and then what the actual value is will be the third argument. So let's go ahead and write that handler. So I'm going to say on set value of range and remember our first parameter was the table that we're working with. 
The second parameter is going to be the range or the cells that we want to work with and then what we want to put in those cells. And just as always for our handlers we'll add our try block. We'll do our on error handler with an E to capture the error message. We'll use our display error handler again and in this case we'll set the first parameter to set value of range and the second value or parameter will be E and then we will return false and end try. All right, so now we get to work within the numbers document and start putting the data in the table. So I'm going to say my add row if missing, and this is going to be a handle that will add an additional row to the table if necessary. So we need to know the table and the range that we want to fill. And similarly, we'll have another one for my add column if missing, where if we don't have enough columns, we can tell it to add an additional column. And then we're going to tell the application numbers to set value of every cell in range, and then the supplied range, the range, of whatever table, the table we're working on, to the value that we've supplied. And if that works successfully, we'll return true. So now we need to write the add row if missing handler. I'm only going to focus on the add row if missing. I won't do the duplicate of add column if missing because it's the same concept. And I'm going to go ahead and say on add row if missing, and the two parameters are going to be the table and the range. So we need to compare this supplied range with what we have for rows currently. And if the range exceeds the number of rows we have, then we know we need to add rows accordingly. So I'll say tell application numbers and then we'll add our end tell. And then I'm going to go ahead and say set required rows to my calculate last row of range because I need to know how many rows are in that range or what's the highest number of the, of the range. And then I'm going to say set existing rows to count of the table. And then if required rows is greater than existing rows, then we know we need to do something, so we're going to say repeat required rows minus existing rows times. So that'll tell us how many times we need to run through this repeat. Okay, so now we've got our repeat structure in place. Now I can say my add row. We're going to write a new function called add row and we need to know what table we want to add the row to. Okay, so now we're going to jump over and write the add row function or handler. So I'm going to say on add row and then again we need to know the table that we're going to add the row to. And I'll say try tell application numbers set new row to add row below last row of the table and tell. So that's going to tell numbers to add a row to the bottom of the table. And then of course we'll do our return true on error E and we'll use our display error and we'll return false if we had the error and then we'll end our try block. So now we've got a way to add as many rows as necessary for the range that we were talking about. And so now we can just keep adding uh, additional pieces of data and if we happen to be short on a column or row our Handlers will deal with that and add those columns and rows as necessary. So I'll say set value of range the table B1 to extension. So I'm basically creating a header row here for all the information we're going to capture. I'm going to say set value of range the table C1 to kind. Set value of range the table D1. And let's put in the modified month here. And then we'll do one more set value of range the table and this time we'll do it in column E, so we'll do E1, and then we'll say modified year. All right, so now we've created the header row, we need to start actually putting in the body rows. So we can start putting in the information in our repeat loop the same way we created our header row, but now with the actual values we're coming across as we process each of the files. So we'll say set value of range, the table, again, we need to know which table, column A, and now we're gonna be a little bit tricky about which row, so we're gonna say, I because that's our repeat number plus one because we don't want to start with one we want to start with two and then we're going to put in the different values so base name in this case 
Now remember, every time we go through this loop, i is going to increase by one. So the first time it'll be one, second time two, three, and four, and then we're gonna add one to that, which means we're gonna skip the first row and start putting this data into the second, third, fourth, fifth row, and so on and so forth. So we'll just keep adding all the pieces of data to match up to the header row that we created before. So I'm gonna say a bunch of set value handler calls with the pertinent information for that particular column. So we'll just fill out A, B, C, and D, and E, just like we did for the header row, but this time dynamically with the information we're capturing about each file. So lastly, I'm finishing off this year modified year one. So I'm gonna say E and then I plus one, and then modified year as the data that we're gonna put into that field. And then I'm gonna say set path to new file to path to desktop as excuse me, desktop folder as string. That'll give us an HFS path to the desktop folder of the current user. And then I'm gonna give it an ampersand with a string, example underscore file dot numbers. So that'll be the name of the numbers file we're creating. And then I'm gonna create a new handler if save as numbers, meaning if that successfully saves, then uh, move on to the next part. And our handler, we'll focus on writing that now. So I'll start with on save as numbers, and we're gonna start with the document we wanna save. The second parameter will be the location we wanna save it to. And we'll add our try block on error E, end try, and then we'll use my display error handler that we created, save as numbers, and then the error message, and return false. Now we just have to write the command to tell numbers to actually save the document. So we're gonna say set save location to my, and we'll use our convert path to, just to make sure that we have the right format. Save location, HFS. And we're gonna tell application numbers and return true. And now we gotta write the statement for numbers to actually do the save. So we'll say, save the document in file, save location. And we already know now that save location is correctly formatted as an HFS path. And now back in our on run handler, we can start writing what happens when we successfully save the document, we wanna close the document. So we'll, we put in a close document handler that we'll write now. So again, I'll start it just like the other ones. I'll say on close document, the document, which document we're trying to close, and then end the close document. And we'll add our try block. And again, we'll do our display error and then close document and then whatever the error was E and we will return false. So now we can say tell application numbers, and then we want to tell it what we want it to do. So we'll tell it close the document, saving no. So basically close this, but don't save any changes because we want to do a separate command for the save that we had already written. Okay, back to the main script. I've now copied and pasted all of the different handlers that we've written throughout this video into this main script. So we're ready to go ahead and give this a trial run and make sure everything's doing what we expect it to do. So if you remember the way the script works is I'm going to run it and be prompted to select a folder. When I select that folder, it will then process all the files in that folder and add them to my numbers sheet. So I'll go ahead and pick my test folder, I'll click choose, and now the script is running, and what we should see is numbers pop to the foreground, add all the information, and then save itself. And if we open up the numbers file again, you can see it's created a new numbers file with columns A through E and rows one through eight with all of the information that we've told it to put in here. I hope you found this video either educational or entertaining. If so, please consider clicking the like button. Also, drop me a comment. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this and what you'd like to see. Thanks so much.